In this video I'm going to talk a little bit about the instrument rack that I use for creating my drum loops. I do use drum racks but I find that uh, they're much better in a live situation. Um, for production purposes on the arrange page I find seeing uh, just a single MIDI clip um, a little bit limiting, it's not very clear um, so I like each of my different drum hits to be laid out um, in front of me so I can program them easily. Um, I also find that the drum rack is a little bit cluttered when it comes to automation so I actually use um, a bespoke rack that I've made myself um, which you can see in the bottom pane here. Uh, we'll build this from the ground up so you can see exactly how it's done and uh, the reason that I use it. So I start off um, using a simpler and then follow that up with both an EQ3 an EQ8 and then finally Spectrum. And If we just group those together Control G now, the reason that I use uh, an EQ3 and an EQ8, probably better if I show you, let's, let's use the clap as an example. Now you can see the frequency of the clap here, and if I use the EQ8 to roll off the, the top frequencies, you'll hear them attenuating and you can see the curve that it uses here and we've still got some of these high frequencies left if however we go across and we use the EQ3 it's a much deeper cut it really gets rid of those frequencies that I don't want so I have the EQ8 as a, a kind of precision tool if you like and I use the EQ3 to really cut unwanted frequencies, I mean particularly the clap for example, you'd want to roll off this uh, area here so it's not conflicting with the kick. Okay, so we've got all of these grouped together now in one rack and we're going to set up our macros. So I have uh, start on macro 1, length on 2, attack on 3 and release on 4. So the top row is, is pretty much your kind of envelope type um, controls. Then on the second row, let's put that back in map mode, have a transpose, volume and the low frequency and a high frequency of EQ3 and also map these on off buttons to match the, the low and high frequencies because these act as, as kind of DJ uh, mixer they'd be they'd be kill switches so as soon as they're turned off they immediately cut any frequency either below this amount or above this amount so if we actually set these to the amounts that we would we want them at as default I set the release to roughly 50 milliseconds because what that means is that when you're adjusting the length of your um, notes in the MIDI clip, you've got a lot more control. If you have a really long release, then obviously that's not going to show you accurately what's happening. Okay, then transpose, which is ultimately your pitch control at zero. Volume around minus 20. Now that might seem quite extreme, but for my drums, I have uh, the velocity here at around 80%. Um, and if you don't set your volume to, to a really low number, you're going to find that that booms out at you very quickly. Um, and also in this area, it's worth putting the voices to one. Um, it's going to save you a lot of CPU power and what that means is that you're not playing, basically you're not layering your drums in simpler. You may want to do that so you can always turn that up but um, as a rule I think you're, you're going to find you only need one voice and uh, it's much better on your CPU. Um, and then finally let's just make sure that the EQ3 isn't, um, isn't affecting any of the frequencies at the moment. And we just need to make a few more adjustments so if you go into map mode 
and we're going to go to the high frequency kill switch if you like and turn that turn that up so that it's it's only on when this control here your frequency control is turned all the way up and likewise you need to do it the opposite way for the low frequencies and then also um, one other thing that's worth changing is the transpose control we're going to have these all mapped to MIDI controllers and really we're just going to be using it to finally adjust the drum sound so minus 48 and plus 48 semitones is a little bit extreme so if we just do one octave in either direction and that's that set up nicely um, now I actually have this uh, blue hand, this method of controlling, so I don't have to map each of these to um, my MIDI controller every time I click on the rack, it automatically takes this over. And I will discuss that uh, in a later video because I've seen a lot of questions on the forums about how that's carried out, it, uh, it can be a little bit confusing. So just to make sure that uh, this is working, excellent stuff. So the reason that I do this, let's let's set up a a very simple clip here Let's see what we're doing a bit better okay so we need to load a sound in go for some sort of percussion have something quite extreme like that for the moment just so we can hear all of these controls in action. Now what this enables you to do is just hit on the hot swap button and using the up and down keys on your keyboard and enter you can change the hits. And now because we've got the eight macro controls mapped we can finally choose, tune those, so it's very easy to quickly find the drum sound that you're looking for. You can adjust, for example, the start length, take some of that attack off. Sounds dreadful. Let's put this in. Okay, that's a little bit more pleasing to the ear. And obviously, this also allows us, once we've got the settings exactly as we want them. going to allow us to then automate that over time to spice up the drum loop a little bit so you could for example almost have it fade in just by using the start time So the main purpose of this, as I said, is so that you can very easily cycle through the different drums, adjust your pitch on the fly, your lengths, your envelopes, really quickly find the drum sound that you want. And then once you've got it in there, you can obviously automate it. So that's uh, how you create this. One last thing, you might want to quickly rename it. 
you can drag that up into the browser and that will be ready to use um, whenever you like. So that pretty much concludes this video. In the next video, I'll discuss creating a basic drum loop in a little bit more detail. Um, and then we'll look at Live's groove functions and also how to create some of these glitchy sounds that you hear in uh, dance music today.